Hello everybody, this is the King of Pikmin here yet again, and today I want to do a breakdown for the trailer of Doom the Dark Ages. Now, anyone who watches the channel knows me very well. I'm a huge Doom fan, and I'm a bit late with this breakdown. Undoubtedly, so many people have done breakdowns already. I might just be rehashing stuff that's already been discussed to death. But nonetheless, I saw things in the trailer I wanted to talk about, so I'm throwing my hat in the ring anyways. I'm going to be watching the trailer at 0.5 speed, pausing and pointing out things that I noticed. It's going to be focused more on the gameplay aspect with light aspects about the lore and whatnot, but I wanted my breakdown to focus more on the gameplay, so let's get right into it, shall we? I know I said I was going to focus mainly on gameplay, which stands true, but I want to briefly go over some of the lore implications, and here it says, Before he became a hero, he was the super weapon of gods and kings. That's of course in reference to the namesake of this game, the Dark Ages. Um, that was a time period in the Doom lore where the Doom guy, after Doom 64, long story short, ended up in Argent Dener, the homeworld of the Sentinels. He rose through the ranks and became what we know him as now through various means, which again, I'm sure we're going to see in this game. That's another reason why I don't want to go over the lore too terribly much, because it's going to be fleshed out and we're going to see it all transpire in this game, I would assume. And here we have a sweeping shot of Argent Dener, which is, of course, as I mentioned, the homeworld of the Sentinels as hell is invading. This looks to be right here the Colosseum where you fought the gladiator in doom eternal and also the Colosseum where the doom guy proved his worth and was thrown into the military of the planet i could be wrong on that but it sure looks the same and here's interesting again and so far it's just lore because we haven't seen gameplay yet but this seems to be of maker design those of you who played um doom eternal especially will know of the maker race uh, and this undoubtedly looks of maker design, but there's some fires. It looks like there's trouble in paradise up there. And then here we get to see the, the main man himself. Take note of the pelt. I'm not too big on the pelt personally, not that it matters because uh, the design is amazing regardless. But take note of the pelt because I noticed something later in the trailer that we'll talk about. Here we have everybody's favorite Doom weapon, the Super Shotgun, coming out, of course. Notice no meat hook. I feel like nothing that was in Doom Eternal mechanic-wise is going to be coming back in this game. And then, anyone who knows me, I was freaking out when we saw that the Doom Slayer had a shield. I'm a shield fanatic. I can't tell you why, they're just sick. And then here, this is interesting. Again, looks like Maker Design, and I'm pretty darn sure this has to be after the Doom Slayer got his powers, like with the Divinity Machine. Um, because I would assume what they're trying to tell us is that's the Doom Slayer being launched from that uh, ship. And he's landing on the battlefield. I don't think that's just a projectile because you, the next frame, you see like the destroyed forest around him and he's rising up. So I'm pretty sure that was him being launched. I mean, that he's called a super weapon. So he's basically being launched like a missile, you know, into the battlefield. Okay, here we get to see the new design uh, of some of the weapons. Here's the super shotgun, looks a bit more archaic, but looks amazing. And we see him just chunk a Mancubus in one shot. So are we to believe that the enemies are going to be weaker? And there's just going to be more of them? Uh, I'm pretty sure that's the direction they're going for. They've said, since the trailer has come out, they've said specifically that they're trying to go back to a more grounded approach rather than Doom Eternal's high-flying, like, super... Cr it's still going to be frenetic, but uh, not to the level that Doom Eternal was. Now, was this Mancubus injured beforehand, or did the Super Shotgun really just kill him in one hit like that? We'll have to just, remain we'll just have to wait and see. Also notice the projectiles... They've already said, you know, since I'm uh, since I was late on this breakdown, some more info has come out, so I can confirm that they're trying to go more back to basics in regards to projectile speed and strafing, as opposed to just staying on the move at all times in terms of just dashing all over the place like Doom Eternal, which I'm all for. You know, I think innovating each time they release a new game is good because it keeps things fresh. And then here we have the Skull Crusher, I think is what they're. Uh, or Skull Launcher, 
I forget what they officially called it, which obviously grinds up that skull, as you can see, like right over here, grinds up that skull and then launches out like flechette, basically of just skull pieces. And does it look familiar to you at all? To me, it just looks like a very archaic version of the Unmaker, uh, which is a weapon that's been in previous Doom games, which I'm all for that. Oh, no need to talk about Skull Crusher anymore because this right here, the shield saw is where I lost it. Oh my gosh, a shield that doubles as a chainsaw. He revs it up and I just, I lost it guys. <laughs> that was That was all there was to it. Here we have what looks to be quite obviously a new design on the revenant enemy type but this is interesting he throws the shield and if you look it's going to be hard to point out because it gets kind of blurry but if you look the shield embeds itself in the revenant and then it's still grinding him as they're falling i don't know if you can really tell there uh maybe i'll drop down let's drop it at 0.25 and then let's take another look at that watch the shield hit and that you see it grinding as he falls i don't think that's going to be an instant kill or anything like that what i think that's going to be is kind of like a lockdown tool like they're trying to make the doom slayer less mobile you're still going to be fast i'm sure but he's less mobile so i think they're trying to give you tools to lock down more mobile enemies and i think that shield toss is going to have the option of doing that if you throw it like a, at a heavier enemy, because later we'll see it slices through the small, low-level enemies very easily. But the fact that it embeds itself in that Revenant, maybe it is in this to kill. This is all speculation. But I think it's more just going to lock down like a high-priority target so that you can deal with other people or do big damage. But moving on from that, we'll see. The reason I say I think it locks him down is because the shield doesn't come back for the rest of this whole clip. This is another interesting thing. Notice how one of the projectiles is green. Those of you who played Doom Eternal will know green was a signifying factor of vulnerability for enemies, like the Gladiator, the Dark Lord, the Marauder, all of them flashed green when they were vulnerable and could be hit. I think that's being flipped on its head in this game, and it's more green is going to signify things that can be parried, because later in the trailer, again, we'll see a Hell Knight be parried by the shield. So the shield's certainly going to have parrying properties, and I think green is going to mean parryable. So these red, you're going to want to avoid or probably just block. But the green, you might be able to parry for some sort of bonus. I'll talk more about that a bit later. But yeah, you see clearly different. And then here, <laughs> this is just nonstop. I'm having to talk so much. I could be completely wrong here, but I think this low level enemy is riding a pinky demon. Because a lot, you'll see a lot of the demons have different designs because of the time difference between Doom 2016 and the Dark Ages. So I think this is like an early pinky before like evolution maybe change it to what we know it as in the more modern games. And I think it's being used as a mount. And this is another thing I want to talk about. You see him smack with the mace. I've seen people saying that this is just a fast glory kill. I'm going to go on record saying I think glory kills are not going to be in this game or not going to be as we know them from Doom Eternal and Doom 2016. Now, why do I say this? It's because I don't think we saw a single glory kill in this whole trailer, and normally they definitely showcase glory kills. This is something I'm prepared to be wrong about because I love glory kills, but I think this is just a regular mace swing that just happened to kill the enemy, and I think that's going to be how you finish off enemies to maybe get health or armor. It'll most likely drop health if you kill with melee, if it has any effect whatsoever. Long story short, my point is, I think this is just a melee attack that happened to kill the rider. Um, and then the, we're probably gonna have to deal with the pinky shortly after, because he's gonna still be alive. He was shaking it off, as you saw there. Here's something very interesting. You, we have floating, like what looks like arachnatrons, just like the brain, you know, floating in the background, almost like a cacto demon. That's new, to my knowledge. I don't remember ever seeing anything like that. So it's like a different variant on an Arachnotron? Or would there be like a, a different name for just the brain of it? <laughs> I, I, I'm at a loss on that one, boys and girls. But it's interesting. Here, let me... I'll, this right here is what I'm talking about. The uh, floating brain in the back. Because then we you see the Arachnotron right here. We know them. And then we have another brain floating back there. Then there's another brain hiding back here. Probably an Arachnotron. Otherwise, it'd be higher up floating. And then we have the the moment that I also lost it blocking with the shield like this. It's probably going to be like a stamina bar. It's hard to say. Like I think it's going to be kind of like the dash mechanic in Eternal where it's going to have 
a, like an upgradable stamina usage kind of thing where it'll recharge over time. Um, so like you use the shield block, you might lose more based on what's you, what you're blocking, or it's just a set amount of time. The longer you hold the shield up, the longer, the faster the bar drains, and then it'll recharge over time. That's just complete speculation, but I assume there would be some sort of limitation on an effect like this. Although it does look like it takes away your offensive capabilities because you notice he doesn't have his gun up at the same time. So it looks like this will save you in a pinch or maybe there's going to be some lock on attacks that previously in Doom Eternal you dodge. Use your, your new dash mechanic to uh, avoid lock on attacks. Here you might have to just stand your ground and block them. Again, all speculation. There we have the shield toss. I assume the shield toss is with a revved up chainsaw you can throw to slice enemies in half, or maybe you can just throw it at any time. It could be charges, kind of like grenades. Maybe the grenades won't be a thing in this game. Uh, maybe it'll be more, the, the shield is your grenade. You know, it has, it has a ton of different uses as we'll see later in the video, but being able to throw the shield to slice all these guys up, I'm all for it. And over here, it took me, when I first saw the trailer, I thought maybe it was an arch vial or perhaps even like a bulkier prowler, but no, that's an imp. That's definitely an imp because they have the same like walk animation and stance as the, the, the imps from the original Doom. And then here we have a bunch of what looks like Night Sentinels dead out front, but the Doom Slayer is jumping in with the new nail gun and coming in with a shield bash. So we've seen a lot of different attacks with the shield. You can throw it, you can block with it, I mean, I know that's not an attack, but you can shield bash with it. And my theory is that successful parries, kind of like in Doom Eternal, where glory kills would recharge the Sentinel Hammer in the DLC or Blood Punch, I think successful parries will charge your shield for these different effects. Maybe not all of them, maybe just the shield bash or maybe none of them. I don't know, but I think the shield and parrying is going to replace glory kills filling charges for these special attacks. And you see this uh, imp here is charging up a green blast. If you were able to throw it, it probably parryable. But again, that's just theory. Now this nail gun seems to have impaled the imp. But my brother actually pointed out after uh, we had done our reaction, that's actually a spike wall. So did the nail gun impale the imp, or did it just la launch the imp backwards? And the spike wall is what impaled him. I really don't know. Over here is what I'm talking about. Of course, I would be surprised if the nail gun didn't uh, impale the enemies onto walls but it's very valid to say that it's the spike wall that actually impaled the imp and not the nail itself here's the moment we're talking about you see the hell knight's glowing green normally that would mean he's vulnerable to be stunned but here we see a parry and that's what stuns him so it's going to be more defensive I think in terms of like, let's say theoretically Marauder comes back. You're not going to wait for the opportunity to shoot him in order to make him vulnerable. You're going to wait for the opportunity to parry him with the shield to make him vulnerable, if that makes any sense. And then my theory again, these parries are going to yield some sort of positive effect. Maybe the shield's going to be buffed or maybe it'll give you access to these different abilities. There's going to be, or maybe the parry is strictly just for the benefit of stunning the enemy and defending yourself and then one shot just like before with the mancubus obliterates that hell knight then we see the shield bash again that's another thing that makes me think that parry he did on the hell knight is what gave him access to that shield bash no real uh, proof of that by any means but that's my theory here we have what i initially thought might be a baron of hell let me go back a little bit. I'll just pause right here. So I don't think this is a Baron of Hell. I think this is an Agadon Hunter. Uh, those of you who played Doom Eternal, you know the Doom Hunter is an Agadon Hunter that's been repurposed as something that will hunt the Doom Slayer. But if you look at the Doom Hunter next to this, they look pretty similar. So it's just, go it's a reach to say for sure that this is an Agadon Hunter, but I definitely see it and think that it's possible. You know, you got the horns, even the rib cage looks very similar, like right around here as to where the top torso of the Doom Hunter is attached to the sled. I think it's very plausible uh, that this is, this is the original, not the Doom Hunter, but the Agadon Hunters, which will be very interesting to see 
And then we have this melee combo, two hits with the mace and then a big boot. Hard to say too much about this. Um, it could be like a blood punch situation where it's like a special powered up melee string that you can do if you meet certain conditions, or maybe you can just do it at any time. Maybe they're making melee more powerful because melee outside of glory kills and blood punch, of course, traditionally hasn't been very good uh, in the most recent Doom games. So maybe this time around, they're really giving you the chance to just unleash up close. Just remains to be seen. And then here we get the Atlan mech. I, the name slipped my mind when I was uh, reacting, but the big uppercut. This makes me think of EDF, Earth Defense Force, because I use the uh, Air Raider and you can call in a giant mech that lets you punch like the other giant, you know, Kaiju level monsters. And this just gives me those vibes, but it's in first person. And I was so sad we didn't get to use Atlan mechs in uh, Doom Eternal. Now we do. So, <laughs> you know, I'm super stoked. We all are. Doom fans are eating good here. Oh, I forgot to mention. The reason I told you to keep an eye on that pelt, look at the back of what I think of this uh, enemy here. It looks like possibly the pelt that the Slayer's wearing. Maybe it is. Maybe it's the this fur of an Agadon hunter. Or is that even their fur? Or are they just wearing a pelt of some creature on this planet? Who knows? I just thought it was interesting. Maybe it's kind of like the Nemean lion with Hercules. The Slayer wears it as, you know, a symbol of what he's accomplished. But then, yeah, the Atlan mechs coming in with the big uppercut. Can't wait to brawl with those guys. And then here we have the dragon. Uh, on my reaction video, I saw a lot of people complaining like, oh, this is nothing like Doom, this, that, or the other. But I think this junk is sick. So I'm super stoked. Look at this. He has, he's got the Gatlin guns up top here. And we see later he's got fire breath. And then this looks like Argent energy, which is kind of interesting. Um, it looks like you're, oh my gosh, like Panzer Dragoon style. It just, we don't get to see much. I don't have much more to say about that other than it's sick. And then we see here a reference to probably Godzilla, where, um, there it is. I, I jumped ahead a little too much. The dragon's breathing fire down the Titan's mouth. So, can't wait. Where's the Doomslayer sitting? Is he up here with the miniguns? I think that might be him right there. I don't know but that'll do it guys i know kind of a whirlwind i was just throwing stuff out there like crazy but i wanted to throw my hat in the ring or did i want to throw my shield in the ring should i say now i don't know hopefully you know i pointed out some things that maybe you guys didn't notice or maybe threw out some theories that people haven't thought about but if i just rehashed everything my apologies i'm just super excited and i wanted to talk about what i noticed personally in the trailer so thank you guys so much for watching let me know what you noticed down below and let me know what you think about my theories down below as well it's a good time to be a doom fan because this game there's nothing to complain about from my end I, i'm just nothing but smiles about it so can't wait for the game to come out. Can't wait to find out more about it. See if any of my theories are correct. But until then, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for tuning in.